going to talk to you about Cola Life. Cola Life actually isn't a charity. Um, it doesn't employ anybody. Um, but it involves about 12,000 people all across the world. Um, we are going to move now into incorporating Cola Life uh, and moving into uh, an implementation phase of the idea. But for, for up till now, it's been purely voluntary. Um, no one works for Cola Life. So what is Cola Life all about? Well, Cola Life is based on two facts. The first fact is that virtually anywhere you go in the world, including the most remote parts of developing countries, you can get a Coca-Cola. And now, those of you who've travelled, is that true or false? <laughs> and the second fact is that in these same places, particularly in very remote areas of developing countries, this is an average figure, 20% 20, 20 of children don't reach their fifth birthday. Um, and that was true 30 years ago, and it's still, still true today. Uh, in other, well, another way of putting that is that's four children every minute in Africa alone, more than 4,000 every day. And because it's an everyday thing, it never makes the news, but if 4,000 kids were to die anywhere tomorrow, all of a sudden, it would make news. This happens day in, day out, uh, and as I said, has, has happened uh, for decades. This video tells you what Cola Life's all about. The Cola Life story started for me um, when I worked in northeast Zambia uh, 22 years ago um, in a very sparsely populated part of the world. Slash and burn was the traditional form of agriculture because it was so sparsely populated. But wherever you went, uh, people would gather and almost always you were asked whether you wanted a Coca-Cola or not. And it was this point that I put those two facts together and I thought, well, if you can get Coca-Cola everywhere, why can't you get the knowledge and the very simple medicines to stop these deaths, which are all very sim from very simple causes and preventable? The problem was, at that time, I had no telephone, uh, no postal service, obviously no internet, if you can imagine such a world. Um, and the only piece of equipment we had was this, uh, which my son, who was very little at the time, used to call a TEDx machine. Uh, it's actually a telex machine. Uh, again, not a lot of you might not even be aware of that. Uh, but um, that was the communication device. That was the technology I had at my, ha at my disposal to do the sort of networking that we've just been talking about. And I failed. Couldn't get anyone's attention. Word of mouth didn't work. Um, uh, and so um, I didn't get any well. So I came back to this country um, because of those children. Uh, and uh, got heavily involved in bringing up kids and so on. So the, the, the idea went to the back of my mind. And then uh, two or three years ago, uh, in April, in fact, 2008, I thought I'd have another go at this idea. Uh, at that time, I was blogging. I'm all, I've was always been into, into the technology. Uh, I was blogging, and I thought, oh, you know, I'll be able to uh, get people's attention by, by writing a blog post, updating my data. That was a depressing bit. As I say, the data hadn't really changed. I did this blog post, and I got onto the phone, on the phone to Coca-Cola. Didn't get, again, didn't get anywhere, didn't get through, the part, you know, th through even the first line of defence, which is the CSR receptionist. Um, she sent me a load of stuff about how wonderful Coca-Cola was and all the great things they were doing in the world, but she wasn't listening to what I wanted to say, <laughs> to pick up on a point from the last presentation. So I thought, what else, what else can I do? And at this point, all people my sort of age... Um, with children and even some of us have grandchildren, are on Facebook. Because we need to be on Facebook to keep an eye on those children and grandchildren. <laughs> uh, and I thought, well, why don't I set up a Facebook group? Let's see if this, this thing actually works. So I looked at, I got a very geeky sort of title with all the key words in. What is it? Let's talk to Coca-Cola about saving children's, the world's children. I thought, that were the key words. That all, that all pop up when people search for this sort of thing. Um, and note, the aspiration at this point 
was only to get Coca-Cola's attention. I rather naively thought that if I just get this idea in at the right point within Coca-Cola, they would just take it on as a no-brainer. Naive. Then I got quite encouraged, because even after a couple of days of that Facebook group, there were people joining it that I didn't know. <laughs> um, and they didn't know my friends either. So it, was, it, it grew very, very slowly, and, um, but was very encouraging. It gave us more, more, more confidence in the idea. And then I thought, well, what else can I do? And I went on to the um, BBC's website. Um, and there's a programme, as you, you, you probably know, uh, called PM. It goes out on Radio 4 every day. And then on Saturday, it's the IPM programme, the Interactive PM programme. And the, the Saturday show is built th or by ideas put by users. So um, I thought, right, I'll put this, I'll put this, um, I'll put this idea up. And the, and the, the IPM t team picked it up. And they did this, this fabulous... 10-minute um, feature, uh, which included um, a, a song from Eve Graham, it included, um, a, and they got a, a, a statement from Coca-Cola. So the Facebook group, group got me the attention of the BBC, and the BBC got onto Coca-Cola, and this guy, Salvatore Gabola, uh, said he'd, he, he was prepared to have lunch with me. Uh, he is, well, actually, he's not in the same position anymore. He's moved up in Coca-Cola. But he, at that time, was the global head of stakeholder relations within Coca-Cola. And he, I meet, met with him in um, uh, about July 2008. Although he's the global head, that, that his team is based in Brussels, which is was really handy. So, so we met, and he gave me lots of sort of um, ideas um, of how we might pursue this. One was... Don't try and go to Coca-Cola with this new project. Try and link it into something else they're already doing, and that fortunately there was something we could do, could, could link it into. The other thing was, which this is, bit, this is the insight, was that you, he said to me, you may think Coca-Cola Coca could just do this, and, and we can't. Um, he said, if we were to do this, we would immediately get accused of taking over the public health service, we get uh, accused of undermining the public health in developing countries. We get accused of meddling in, in areas we don't understand and all the rest of it. So a part of what Cola Life has got to do is create an environment amongst Cola consumers, Coca-Cola consumers over the world, in which, it's, it make, which makes it OK for Coca-Cola to engage. So it's a, it's a process. That process is important. I mentioned that we've convened people around the idea. We were very open with the idea. And that has had amazing um, consequences. The convening, first of all, and this is the only thing I had in mind when I set up the Facebook group, has got people around the idea so that Coca-Cola have taken notice. I expected that to happen. What I didn't expect to happen was that the convening also improved the idea. Uh, this is the idea we had a couple of years ago. That we, we would take a bottle out. Only one in you know, every ten crates, for goodness sake, uh, and we re replace it with a tube. Um, and in that tube, we would have oral rehydration salts. And because we were public with that idea, people challenged it. They just didn't necessarily come up with better ideas, but they, they challenged the idea, and we had to make it better and better. And the first challenge was, um, well, the reason you're interested in Coca-Cola's distribution network is because it's so good. And the reason it's so good is it's so commercial. You have just undermined the commercialness of the whole thing by taking a bottle out. And by the way, what would you do with a spare bottle? You know, just, it's not, never going to work. Someone said, well, why don't you look and have a look inside a crate and see if you can use the unused space? So I got inside a Coca-Cola crate <laughs> when I was in Tanzania at the invitation of Coca-Cola. And I took that picture. And as you can see, there's actually quite a lot of space inside a Coca-Cola crate. So we've moved from the cylinder, removing the bottle, to this wedge-shaped um, container, which I will now pass around, um, which uses unused space within the crates. The other challenge, there's been loads of challenges, but the second challenge of the idea uh, came, rather alarmingly, from someone who worked for Care International. And she said to me, why oral rehydration salts? Why not cigarettes? But what she meant was, I think, <laughs> is that <laughs> it shouldn't be up to someone outside looking in, saying, you know, you need oral rehydration salts. You should, it should actually be the local people who, the local 
people who decide how this opportunity is used. And it should be the people within the country who have the long-term responsibility for public health. And, obviously, and so this mechanism should be implemented in a way that doesn't undermine the existing health in infrastructure. It actually, it actually gives them an extra tool and, um, and strengthens it. So we've gone through various designs of aid pod, as we're calling it. Actually, we didn't call it that. The BBC calls it an aid pod, so we sort of rather stuck with that. And we've ended up with a thing that I'm passing around, which looks like this. And this um, animation, fingers crossed, shows you how it works. It sort of clips underneath the tops of the bottles. Um, it's got those shoulders on it, uh, which make it very strong, so it's, it, it's difficult to sort of twist. Um, this one um, is designed to fit uh, widthways in a crate. <coughs> Come on, crate. There we are. Um, and obviously, you could get five. That's our starting position with Coca-Cola. Uh, we'll probably only do one. But anyway, you can get five in there. When it gets to the other end, uh, the top comes off. You'll notice that it fits in the crate. The top couldn't come off when it was in the crate. Uh, and the social products, we call them. So they could be medicines, but they might be things like water sterilisation tablets or vitamin um, supplements or whatever. The other design feature is the depth of the lid is the same as the collar it fits on, so it, it, it can't crush that way. So that's, that's, that's what, So the idea has, has improved just by convening people around the idea. So let's have a look, analyse where we are with this idea now, which, as I say, has got better and better as it's gone along. At the core of the idea is this distribution channel, and that's the only thing we want Coca-Cola to provide. We don't even want them, need, want them to provide the aid pods. We just want them, us to give us the... the the permission to do this and all the people involved in the, in the system, to, the, the permission to engage with us. Then we'd have local determination at this end of what goes in the pods, when that stuff goes in, because it might vary from season to season, uh, where the stuff goes to. And it's the local health people who know that stuff, and that must be fully under their control. And likewise, at the other end, um, what happens when these things arrive, where coke arrives, i.e. Most, like most places, you know, what, what would happen? Would those social products go on the shelves and be sold? Would they be picked up by a, the traditional birthing partner to be used in, in, in her work? Would they be part of a community health programme? Again, nothing to do with Coca-Cola, nothing to do with Coca-Cola life, up to the local health um, infrastructure, local health, health people. Um, we've achieved amazing things, which I don't have time to go into, I see. Um, but I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. And this first thing was that in April, nearly a year ago now, uh, Coca-Cola said this. And they said it on the BBC. Uh, the people you're going to hear are um, uh, a guy from the BBC. Was, oh, Chris Vallance from the BBC was interviewing. And Ewan Wilmshurst is the guy who works for Salvatore in Coca-Cola. Just, just listen to this. Ewan, you made that announcement. What actually are you planning to do? As part of a wider trial to look at our distribution system across East Africa, and in fact, ideally, in the long term globally, is to test the idea behind Cola Life, and that is to make use of our distribution system and certainly our distribution expertise to make available health products to people that need them. We're just looking for the right partners, people who are experts in, in healthcare products and healthcare product distribution. It's not our core business, so we need to make sure we have experts on, on side. And any sense of where you might do this trial? We'll start in Tanzania, probably around Dar es Salaam. The idea is if we can do it in a focused area, we'll get the learnings, what works, what doesn't work, and that ideally can be scaled. Are you confident that at some point this will become an established part of your business? Do you think that's a prospect? Is that a real prospect? If we get this right, it could well become a part of the way that we do business and certainly an expertise that we could share more widely. Well, when that went out, you can imagine we were a very happy bunch of volunteers. I might want hair still got on the back of it when I listen to it now. But they're wriggling all over the place. There was a hell of a lot of wriggle room in there. Listen to it again on the website. Um, there's lots of caveats. But we are, we are still talking to them and we're still talking at a very high level. And... Um, and Things are looking pretty positive. The other thing happened the other day is we actually got through, but Mr Fuller was um, mentioned in an earlier in an early talk, um, uh, we actually are through to the semi-finals of the but Mr Fuller challenge. I didn't knew nothing about but Mr Fuller until I entered the challenge, um, but he's a very interesting bloke. Got time, have, have a look and see what he did. Um, the other thing that's happened is uh, last October, WHO and UNICEF came out with this report. You can read it for yourself. 
diarrhea, you know, why are children, children still dying? What could be done? Uh, again, that sort of raised the agenda again, although when you try and speak to WHO about this, or at least when I try and speak to them, they don't want to, don't want to, don't want to speak with me. Um, but they made some very helpful, um, helpful statements in this report. We need strengthened distribution systems. We need uh, diarrhea treatment kits was an idea they came up with, so that each new, new mother would be given a diarrhea treatment kit, so that when her child got diarrhea, she would know what to do. Those pods that are going, that pod that's going around could actually be a diarrhea treatment kit, and it could be picked up by the traditional birthing partners <coughs> from the place uh, you get Coca-Cola from. The other thing is, they said, market-based solutions are often what's most effect is the most effective way to deliver, to deliver this sort of stuff. And uh, history is definitely on their side on this one, because the NGO sector, I'm part of the NGO sector, so you know, it does a lot of good things, but it hasn't sorted this thing out, uh, whereas Coca-Cola have. So where are we? Well, moving forward, we've got two big challenges. One is how do we integrate and motivate this person and people like him who take that Coca-Cola the last mile. And we're thinking of um, uh, uh, a mobile phone based micropayment system so that there's a commercial imperative for delivering full aid pods to their destination. So people, when, people, when aid pods arrived, a, uh, they would be acknowledged and a micropayment would be made. Um, in the same way, as there is a financial incentive for delivering a full bottle of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola doesn't arrive, crates of Coca-Cola don't arrive at their destination empty. Medicine, unfortunately, does. There's boxes of medicine that arrive at their destination empty at the moment. Coca-Cola doesn't, so we can learn something from that as well. Uh, we're working with this organisation called Frontline SMS and Frontline SMS Credit. Look them up on the web. They're the people who we think can give this, uh, tech, uh, give us this technology. Um, and I want to just finish with a question. Uh, because Corona Life, we're focusing on Coca-Cola, we're focusing on this very practical aid pod thing. But actually, the principles could be applied all over the place. And I, this is the question I have. In five years' time, will it be acceptable to engage in monoproduct commercial distribution in developing countries from a moral, social, and environmental perspective? Thank you very much.